Hey, this is Presh Talwalker, and you're watching Mind Your Decisions. Here's a really fun and challenging geometry problem that's been spreading around the internet. Start out with this square with a side length of 10. On one side, draw a semicircle, and on an adjacent side, draw another semicircle. Now between the two corners of the square, draw a quarter circle. The challenge is to solve for this area shaded in red. Now just to present it in another way, let me label some of the intersection points. ABCD is a square with a side of 10, APD and CPD are semicircles, and ADQB is a quarter circle. The problem is to solve for the shaded area DPQ. I thank everyone who sent me this problem, it was a very popular suggestion, and in particular, I thank Chaitanya from India who was the first person to send me this problem. Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for a solution. So how can we solve this problem? I admit it was very challenging. I originally solved it by making a coordinate system and using calculus to solve integrals. But I suspected this problem could be solved using geometry and trigonometry, so I posted it to Math Stack Exchange. Within hours, David K, Akila Hugh, and Syed posted solutions, and I thanked them for helping me understand how to solve it using elementary methods. So in this video, I'm going to present three ways of solving the problem. I'll first go over the short way using geometry and trigonometry, then I'll present a little bit of a longer way, and then finally I'll present the calculus solution. So let's get started with the short way. In order to solve for this area, we'll solve it by finding the areas of two shapes that will be easier to solve for. So we'll solve for this red area as the area of this blue shape minus the area of this yellow shape. So we have this equation. The blue and yellow shapes are examples of a shape known as a geometric lens. That's the area when two circles intersect. So since we need to know the area of a geometric lens, let's derive it generally. So we'll start out with a semicircle with a radius of A, and perpendicular to it, we have a semicircle with a radius of B. We want to solve for this intersection area. Now to do that, let's connect these two radii to the intersection point, and we form a kite. Now, let's draw a line across this kite. So we're going to essentially solve for this shape by solving for each of these upper and lower shapes. So the area of intersection will be equal to the area of this circular sector minus the area of this triangle, and that'll give us the area of this lower half of the lens. Then we have this circular sector minus this triangle, and that'll give us the area of the upper half of the lens. Now the trick in this problem is that we actually don't need to solve for the areas of the triangles. We can actually solve for the total area that they span. So to do that, consider these two triangles together. Let's draw the other diagonal of this kite. Notice it divides the kite into two right triangles. Now each of these right triangles has legs of A and B. So together, to solve for the total area of these triangles, we need the areas of two triangles who have one leg of A and one leg of B. So each triangle has an area of one half AB, so together both triangles will be equal to AB. So now we need to solve for the areas of these circular sectors and then subtract AB, and that'll be the area of this lens. So how can we solve for the areas of each of these circular sectors? Well, we need to know the radius of each circular sector. That'll be easy. It'll be B for one circular sector and A for the other. And then we need to know the central angle of each circular sector. So let's consider this right triangle. Let's label this angle as theta. The other angle in this triangle will be pi over 2 minus theta. If we look at this right triangle, which is congruent to the upper right triangle, this will also be theta. So here, we have a central angle of 2 theta corresponding to the radius of A, 
So we can solve for the area of this circular sector. It'll be a squared over 2 times 2 theta. In the other circular sector, we have a central angle that's equal to 2 times the quantity pi over 2 minus theta, so it'll be equal to pi minus 2 theta. So we'll solve for the area of this circular sector. It'll be b squared over 2 times the quantity pi minus 2 theta. But what is theta? Well, we'll use trigonometry. In the right triangle, theta will be equal to the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of b over a. So we can substitute that in for theta and then we can simplify. And this will simplify to be the quantity a squared minus b squared times the inverse tangent of b over a plus pi b squared all over 2. And then we need to subtract from that a b. So this will be the area of a geometric lens. So we now need to apply this formula to the two lenses. In this blue shape, we have a equal to 10 and b is equal to 5. So we substitute those into the formula and then we simplify to get 75, the inverse tangent of 0.5, plus 12.5 pi minus 50. In the yellow shape, we have a and b equal to 5. So we substitute those in and then we simplify. We now need to subtract the second equation from the first. When we do that, we can cancel out these terms of 12.5 pi, and we get the answer of 75, the inverse tangent of 0.5 minus 25, and that's approximately 9.77. So that's one way to get the answer. But let's suppose you didn't realize you needed to calculate the area of a geometric lens. How would you solve the problem? Well, let's go over the longer geometric way to solve it. It's essentially gonna be the same method, but it'll be useful to go over the steps to reinforce what we just went over in the short method. So let's get started. So let's solve for the area of this yellow shape. To do that, let's get rid of some irrelevant shapes. We'll draw a line down the middle, dividing it into two equal circular segments. So we just need to solve for the area of one circular segment and then multiply by two. Now to do the area of one of these circular segments, we'll draw in this isosceles right triangle. So this circular segment will be equal to this quarter circle minus the area of this triangle. As the radius of this semicircle is five, the area of this quarter circle is pi times five squared over four, and the area of this triangle is five times five over two. So the area of this circular segment is equal to 25 pi over four minus 25 over two. The area of this yellow shape will equal two times this, which will equal 12.5 pi minus 25. And this is the same result as we had before in the short method. So we now need to solve for the area of this blue shape. How can we do that? We'll draw a line at the two intersection points and we'll solve for each of these areas, this upper area and this lower area. And we want the sum of these two areas but we'll solve for them individually. So this upper area, how do we solve for it? Well, we'll draw in our kite-like figure as before, and we'll draw in the values of these distances. We'll also draw the diagonal of this kite. So notice this kite now has two right triangles who have legs of five and 10. Let's label this angle as theta. Now, we want the area of this upper circular segment, and it'll be equal to the area of this circular sector minus the area of this triangle. We'll put in the dimensions of each of these shapes. The area of a circular sector is equal to 1 half times 10 squared times 2 theta, and the area of this triangle will equal 1 half times 10 squared times the sine of 2 theta. Now theta in this case is equal to the inverse tangent of 5 over 10 or 0.5. We can also solve for the sine of 2 times theta by the double angle identity. Sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. We can get the sine and the cosine by solving for the hypotenuse and then solving for the sine and cosine of each of these angles. And this all simplifies to be 4 over 5. So we substitute these values in to our formula above and we get the area of this blue shape is equal to the following, which we can simplify to be 100 
times the inverse tangent of 0.5 minus 40. Now to solve for this lower part of the area, we do a very similar calculation. We put in our kite, and then we need to solve for the area of this circular sector minus the area of this triangle. Now the key in this, we have the dimension, which is a radius of five, but we need to know this angle. Now, since one angle is equal to theta in a right triangle, the other angle will equal pi over two minus theta. And this angle will also equal pi over two minus theta. So the central angle will equal pi minus two theta. So the area of the circular sector is equal to phi squared over two times the central angle. And the area of this triangle is phi squared over two times the sine of this central angle. So how can we simplify this? We can simplify sine of pi minus two theta because sine of pi minus two theta is equal to sine of two theta. And we already figured out sine of two theta in the previous calculation is equal to four fifth. So we substitute these values in and then simplify to get that this is equal to 12.5 pi minus 25, the inverse tangent of 0.5 minus 10. So we now can solve for the area of this blue shape by substituting in the values we just derived. We then simplify it to be 75 times the inverse tangent of 0.5 minus 50 plus 12.5 pi. So now we get the area of this blue shape and we need to substitute that in and the, substitute in the area of this yellow shape. We then subtract the yellow shape from the blue shape. So these 12.5 pi's cancel out and it all simplifies to be 75 times the inverse tangent of 0.5 minus 25 and that's approximately 9.77, just as before. So you can see, if we didn't see the trick about the triangles, it's a little bit longer, but it can be solved if you work through it. Now let's suppose that you couldn't figure out the geometric way. You may have approached it like I did using calculus. So first we'll put in a coordinate system. Here's the y-axis and here is the x-axis. We'll now label some points in this diagram. Now all of these are quarter circles or semicircles, so this curve will equal the square root of the quantity 25 minus x squared. This upper curve will equal the square root of 100 minus x squared minus 5. And this semicircle will equal 5 minus the square root of the quantity 25 minus the quantity x minus 5 squared. So we have three different curves that are bounding this area. Now we can solve for the final intersection point by equating the two equations. This point will be eight comma one. So now we can solve for the area of this shape as follows. We need the area of the upper curve going between zero and eight, and then we subtract the area of the lower curve going from zero to five, and then we subtract the area of the other lower curve going from five to eight. So we want the integrals of each of these as follows. So now we need to simplify these integrals. Well, this middle integral will be easy to simplify because it's the area of a quarter circle with a radius of five. So we don't actually need to do the integral. We know that this will be equal to five squared times pi over four, which is 25 pi over four. So that's one part solved. Now this next integral will split into two integrals. We have the integral from zero to eight of the square root minus the integral from zero to eight of the constant five. The second integral is easy to evaluate. It'll be equal to 40. So now how do we solve for this first integral? We we'll use a trigonometric substitution. X is equal to 10 sine theta. This means dx is equal to 10 cosine of theta d theta. We also need to change the limits of integration from going between zero to the inverse sine of 0.8. So we substitute that in. Then we need to simplify that 100 minus 100 sine squared of theta is equal to 100 cosine squared of theta. We then simplify this all out. Now we can solve for this because the integral of cosine squared of theta is very well known. So we substitute that in and we evaluate from the limits of integration. And it simplifies to be 50 times the inverse sine of 0.8 plus 24 and we subtract 40. So this will be 50 times the inverse sine of 0.8 minus 16. So that'll be the first integral. We now need to do a similar thing for this very last integral. 
We split it up into two different integrals. This first integral will be equal to 15. This next integral we can solve first by doing a u substitution. Let's say u is equal to x minus 5. So we change the limits of integration, and we now get the integrand is the square root of 25 minus u squared. To solve for this integral, we can do a trigonometric substitution that u is equal to 5 sine of theta. It'll be a very similar calculation to the first integral that we figured out, and I'm just going to skip some of the steps. It all comes down to be negative 6 minus 12.5, the inverse sine of 0.6. So we put this all together, and we get that this simplifies to be 9 minus 12.5 times the inverse sine of 0.6. So we now just need to simplify this expression. And that's our answer. We have 50 times the inverse sine of 0.8 plus 12.5 times the inverse sine of 0.6 minus 25 minus 25 pi over 4. But this is quite a bit more complicated than the geometry and trigonometric solution. And I wondered how could we reconcile it? How can we get it to be using the inverse tangent and just, you know, two simple terms? So let's try and reconcile these two answers. Well, we can do that by drawing this right triangle this 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Notice that theta is equal to the inverse sine of 0.6, and alpha is equal to the inverse sine of 0.8. Furthermore, theta plus alpha is equal to pi over 2, because these two angles sum to be 90 degrees. Therefore, 12.5 times the inverse sine of 0.8 plus 12.5 times the inverse sine of 0.6 must be equal to 12.5 times pi over 2. So how can that help us? Well, what we're going to do is this first term where we have 50 times the inverse sine of 0.8, we're going to split it up into 37.5 times the inverse sine of 0.8 and 12.5 times the inverse sine of 0.8. So now we have 12.5 times the inverse sine of 0.8 plus 12.5 times the inverse sine of 0.6, and this is equal to 25 pi over 4. So we substitute that in, and it cancels out with this other 25 pi over 4. So this all simplifies to be 37.5 times the inverse sine of 0.8 minus 25. And this is approximately equal to 9.77. So it's equivalent to our answer, it's just two terms. But something still bothered me about it, because it's the inverse sine, and the previous answer was equal to the inverse tangent. So how can we reconcile those two components? Well, I looked up this formula. If you substitute in x is equal to 0.8, you get that this simplifies to be 2 times the inverse tangent of 0.5. And that gives us our final equivalence that this is equal to 75 times the inverse tangent of 0.5 minus 25. So we verified our solution using calculus. Did you figure out this problem? And which method did you use? Thanks for watching this video. These math videos, which can be watched for free on YouTube, inspire and build confidence for people around the world, and they already have over 100 million views. Please subscribe for free to get the newest videos, and email me a puzzle or math topic, presh at mindyourdecisions.com. If you so choose, you can check out my merchandise on Teespring. You can check out my books, which are listed in the video description, and you can support me on Patreon for exclusive rewards. Thanks for watching, and thanks for your support.